I was thinking back on a lot of your stories that you were posting when you were traveling to like Egypt. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge traveler as well. I love travel. I think it's a great way to expand the mind and to really get yourself out of your comfort zone. And so I just like I had to ask what were some of uh, what were some of your favorite travels, but more specifically, like what were some of your favorite travels in terms of like places you felt were really spiritually charged or you just had like a real connection on a deep level to? Wow, that's that's <laughs> ever since uh, June, uh, late May of 2022, I can count. I mean, everywhere I've been, really, that's when a spiritual awakening and shift in my life really started to happen. I prayed for it, but when it started to take action physically, um, just <laughs> over my entire being, uh, I can't even describe how powerful that was, but it was tough. It was, it was a gauntlet, but, um, I would say the, the first part, most beautiful part was at, at the Saqqara step pyramid in Egypt. That's where I experienced a big, profound, um, just overwhelming source of energy that, uh, led to a shift that I started to feel. And it was interesting. I couldn't figure out what I was going through, but it was putting me on the path that I prayed for, like I said, and that's to, you know, just clean up my life, get sober from alcohol, rid my body, uh, uh, friends and acquaintances from people that were trying to take advantage and just manipulative, deceptive people. And uh, that started to happen just one by one. Um, it, it's amazing how powerful spirituality has uh, played a role in my life since I can remember. But uh, so getting back to that, uh, those the, my roots really and where I come from is my goal now, my mission for as long, I mean, just to stay in the present, obviously, but I'm so, it's been replaced like that temptation to go out and have a good time and celebrate and do all of that has been completely replaced with nature and spirituality for me. And so seeking those sacred places all around the world, Chichen Itza, Mexico, Peru, going to Machu Picchu, going to Karnak, back to Egypt to pay my respect and, and gratitude and thanks for helping me, you know, really take over uh, something that was, uh, yeah, it was just, it was affecting me mentally and uh, you know, we were just getting our nervous system correct is so important, you know, and just learning, learning, um, having different mechanisms that I took from different places and different spiritual medicine that I can implement in my uh, daily routine now is really changed. And that over any type of treatment and rehab for me specifically is what uh, led to me getting sober from alcohol. So being here in Sedona, Arizona, in the middle of all of that, uh, what was really a, started to become a crisis last year, but I did my best to manage it and we still were here, you know, but um, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but it was extremely tough, but I, you know, I was addressing the problem. I knew what it was. It was just really hard to, it was a battle for sure. But um, getting back, staying strong with my spiritual roots and my higher power um, connection uh, with, with them, it's, I, I, it's so hard to explain, but I guarantee there are people out there that can relate to having that type of spiritual awakening in their lives. And um, I never thought anything would help me from that issue. And it was so hard because my slogans radiate health. And it's not, you know, I was obviously still in, in good shape working out through that, but battling through that chemical imbalance. We shouldn't have to do that. So eliminating those things that are kind of hindering us and the little speed bumps in our life is essential and uh, optimizing where we're supposed to be and getting on our path and reaching our destiny. Yeah, I, I like that, Andy. Um, first off, Andy, I just want to start off uh, super, super proud of you and how far you've come with just everything. And I know you went through a pretty difficult time and uh, definitely we'll, we'll have to exchange numbers here because, uh, you know, I know it's easier said than done, but, you know, uh, to whatever extent that I could be a resource for you at any time, do please reach out to me. Um, I know like for me, I recently, uh, not last couple of years, I would say, um, connected with a men's group and I was never like, I never even knew what a men's group was. And once I started getting into it and just having this moment of check-in with myself, you know, and being able to 
share a little bit of moment of vulner vulnerability with other guys that um, you know, we're also open to being vulnerable was, was huge for me. And, um, not, not necessarily that I was going through anything super tough, but I think there's a lot of things in the background that we suppress and we just kind of like, ah, it's going to figure itself out. Like I just need to keep pushing, you know? And, uh, I mean, that's, that's how it is, at least for me a lot of the times. And then you don't recognize how in the background that's playing a role, you know? And then like, when you take a moment to sit down and tap in, you're like, damn, <laughs> This is really this is really messing with me right now, and uh, it's it's cool to just have a moment of reflection, which obviously can come from like meditation and other things. But just want to like push that out there that uh you know you can always reach out to me, Andy. Like happy to do whatever whatever possible, and and uh, yeah, man, it's all love here, and and uh, super happy though to see you just moving, man, and like moving mountains, doing big things. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I really do. It's interesting connecting deeper uh internally was what i had to do and really just pinpoint and address it it was tough but um we got through it um just with me and my higher power really a lot of prayer a lot of intention a lot of visualization a lot of meditation breath work and just going through that hump you know getting through it a lot of pain too it's not, it's not easy but um you know I'm definitely better for it. And I have a story to share authentically with anybody else going through something like that, which is real, which makes me feel good. And like, I, I just, I have absolutely nothing to hide. It's nothing to be embarrassed about at all. I'm not embarrassed. And, um, it's just, uh, it's something I can share to help others. That's why I'm here to serve others. That's why I really believe that's like the golden rule. What are we doing to help others? Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, like, that's just, uh, it makes, it fills my soul when we're doing that. And you see other people winning and grinding towards their goals and then reaching them. It, it lights something up inside of me. So I want to follow that and um, just see what I can do to kind of share my, just whatever I can do to relate and make people feel better about themselves. You know, and now I have, aside from skincare or whatever, but uh, I have something personally I can absolutely share and i'm more than willing to it, it is super genuine and and also you're a super genuine person like you are one of the few people that if i reach out on you know instagram or whatever it is like man you are really quick on getting back to people like way faster than i am so um and also you're just very genuine in all your responses so i really appreciate that andy and uh yeah it's cool that you're now able to you know kind of take what stood in the way and made it to become the way, you know, and the very stoic virtues, right. Is, uh, making the obstacle become the way. So, um, that's really cool, Andy. And, uh, yeah, really, really happy for you, man. And, and glad to see you doing well and doing big things with that alley tour natural, man. I mean, uh, I've been, I've been rocking with you guys for a while now and freaking love everything you guys have out. Uh, when I was down in Sedona this last time, was able to pick up some of the meteorite scrub and some more of the gold serum, uh, Really, really nice. Uh, real quick, what what is it in the in the meteorite scrub? That's uh, the like little balls in there. Oh well, we have a little lava rock. We have olive pit, cherry pit, obviously ground meteorite powder from a meteor that landed in Morocco, which I think is kind of cool, having that little cosmic aspect in it. Um, and we have California poppy seeds, a little tribute to California, but it's like a tri level exfoliant system, small, medium, large, just so you're getting with rounded exfoliants. Uh, so you're getting a, a good exfoliation, but without all the harsh cutting angles that some exfoliants, walnut holes, pomegranate shells, stuff like that can do. Yeah, it's really cool too, because I, I love when I see you going out to like Egypt and stuff and then sourcing new items and, and you know finding like what's on the cutting edge or not even cutting edge, but what's been used for generations in that region. And uh, that was one of the things I wanted to ask was like, what are uh what are some of the like more kind of like unsuspecting ingredients that you found that were just incredible for your skin but you would have never guessed that they would be something that would make its way into uh skin formulation uh, i would say freshwater pearl powder i would say uh the colostrum mother's milk from uh cows to their calves uh first four hour milking grass-fed colostrum is loaded with really good uh, trace minerals, nutrients, IGF-1 growth factor components. So during, you know, combined with the vitamin C at the cell turnover process, you're just creating a really healthy uh, collagen layer. And um, let's see, what else? 
Um, oh, uh, U tip. My, uh, the the U. It's it's almost like a pine oil um, that I source from. Uh, it has uh, these taxanes, which are apparently they they mitigate the 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 cancer cells in our body. Taxanes, T A X A N E. Uh, so it's loaded with that, and it, it actually it's in our meteorite scrub as well. And I want to explore um, some other elements, possible products with that as well. But uh, that that's another fun one. Um, you know, it's just, but the whole time tested, you know, process of exploring plants, different, you know, tallow now, beef fat. I even explored that, uh, you know, with our night cream years ago, but I didn't put it in. I was going to, it was a big element of my night cream, but we, we I wanted to get into whole foods and that was on like the restricted list of ingredients. Um, I just feel like there are so many different ways to extract positive elements from plants, animals, uh, soil, rocks, minerals, you name it, to create medicine that, uh, I mean, we're all, uh, you know, so close to nature and the earth. So I just feel like those elements work with our skin and our overall health. Uh, it's funny you, you bring up the colostrum. That's what I was going to ask you about because you actually... I think the first time I really saw colostrum on an ingredient list was from your products. And then obviously here recently with uh, Tri Armra, it's really blown up the colostrum uh, game basically. And, and for me, I actually started trying colostrum for my gut health to see kind of what that would do there. Uh, it turns out it just boosted my immunity like crazy. And so you know, that's like the primary reason I, I take it, I, I ingest it. But yeah, I was really... Um, it was really cool to see that you had it first in your products, like at least for me. And uh, it's really neat because people always look at what we're eating as being like one of the most important things for health, which absolutely is. But they also fail to remember that, you know, skin is a mat. It's the largest organ, right? I mean, it's huge. It covers our whole body. And as well, what you put on it, it is going to be absorbed and used. And so I always love when I, uh, I, I forgot where it was, but I saw you put one of your products in your hand and just lick it straight out of your hand and consume it, which is probably how most of the skin products should be. I mean, to a degree, obviously, I, I know there's some boundaries there, but that was really awesome. I love that. No, thank you. It's, it's extremely important. You know, you mentioned it. Your skin is your largest organ. It's also the largest detoxifying organ as well. So, I mean, things like clays can help in that uh, impurity removal process essentially detoxifying our bodies from heavy, heavy metals and environmental pollutants. But um, yeah, just, you know, as far as what we put on top of our body, it's going to be absorbed within seconds. You know, there's a study that women leave the house, house with over 150 government recognized carcinogens daily, you know, with the combination of makeup, hairspray, perfume, lipstick with that pathway and entry system. It's just scary. You know, we have to really uh, do a better job of, of you know, getting a better glimpse into our ingredient decks and explaining exactly what's in our products to the consumer. Um, I think it's dishonest and, and obviously can lead to accelerating the aging process. It does, that, you know, many of these ingredients do not serve the skin and our overall health. Um, so we have to really get a better glimpse into that. And so things like Think Dirty, the EWG, they have really good ways that you can scan your barcodes from, uh, and get a zero to 10 uh, rating on the clean, cleanliness of the ingredients in the product. So that's super important for um, the consumers to be aware of. Yeah, super important to be aware of. Um, from a, a personal standpoint, I think I, I was mentioning this to you last time, but you know, my mom's a hairdresser and she is surrounded by all kinds of hairsprays and shampoos and, you know, chemicals of, of every kind of nature. And, um, you know, like, kudos to her because, uh, she did, she had uh, breast cancer, uh, right in the beginning of COVID. And, you know, she, she went through with, uh, you know, uh, removal and chemo and, and, uh, all of that. And, and she pulled through, she's doing amazing and she's doing well now. I'd love to see it, but you know, I, I can't help but think that, you know, I mean, there's obviously so many factors that play a role, but it's like, she obviously spends a majority of her time in that area and you know breathing in all of those different chemicals like can't be good for that and of course i know there's other things as well like i saw uh with like 
cons consumption of alcohol for women as like a direct link in increasing chances of breast cancer. So there's a lot, but one thing that we could easily control is like the things we're putting on ourselves every single day, you know, in her case, yeah, she's working in a, in a, a hair salon, but uh, for the average person, like, you know, it is a choice that you're making each day when you're putting on some kind of a product. Yes. Oh man. I'm so glad your mother's doing well. My mom had breast cancer also and she beat it. Um, yeah. It's, you know, just the household products too, you know, our detergents, what we're putting into, you know, uh, clean our laundry sheets, our pillows and things like that, that we're, are, you know, laying on at night right there. Um, you know, it's just, uh, gotta be careful of that because, you know, our skin is so porous and we can absorb those, you know, from sweating, working out, just, I mean, that's a big one. I would say, you know, absorbing all that laundry detergent that is so heavily, uh, fragranced that, um, yeah, we just have to be careful of all elements, you know, wherever we are with what we're putting onto our, our skin. And, and thank you for that as well, Andy. Um, I know from what I've heard, like your mom is, has been a pretty big influence in your life. I mean, I, as, as most moms are, but, uh, I think for you specifically, she's been a pretty big influence on. Huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My, my mom is my everything. Uh, yeah. I, Oh, uh, yeah, my yeah, she's just an angel on earth. She unconditionally has been so uh supportive and uh just loving ever since I can remember. She's had uh the biggest effect on me as an individual uh that I can uh I don't even have to think about it. Yeah, my mother's very I'm very close with my mom. She's very special to me. That's awesome, man. What's it, what's, uh, what's like one of the biggest takeaways or, uh, uh, biggest lessons that your mom's taught you? Kindness, how thoughtful she is, how generous she is. She's so curious about others and helping others. She all day long, not all day long now, but obviously she's retired, but she, uh, she's a sponsor for like three different people in Al-Anon. Uh, she does so many things just things for other people. Uh, she's an incredible friend. She's just an amazing human being. Yeah. Uh, very, very special person on this earth for sure. Yeah. I love my mom. No. Yeah. She sounds like an amazing person and also, uh, a great addition to the community of this communal humanity here. Um, I think that's something we definitely need more of is just, uh, good connection with our, our neighbors and our community. It's something we're lacking. And, um, you know, my fiance, she, uh, she's her, her dad's from Colombia, mom's from Venezuela. And, you know, these are very like different, uh, in comparison to the U S in terms of their co styles of community, you know, they're much more communal and, uh, a collective, you know, and, and really not, not necessarily always relying on each other, but like, having a helping hand out and ready to to give help you know and she she tells me stories of her grandma like making a huge batch of some kind of a meal that like she's never going to eat all of it but it's to distribute to everyone else you know and she's just filling up like whatever container she has and it's like you know then then they're bringing it back and when they bring back their container it's like usually with food and you know she's like a, a grandma living alone but like she's never alone you know there's people passing by every single day and saying hello and and yeah sorry that's i i personally just think that's something we need so much more of i know i agree I agree. Being of service to others. That's really cool. Yeah. It's absolutely something that I experience when I travel, man, I feel at home with people that I, I met, you know, spent hours with inviting me into their homes and people from the community coming in meeting this, this dude, this American dude. And, and then next thing you know, I'm, I'm keeping in touch with them daily doing FaceTimes, you know, we're both trying to figure each other's language out. It's, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, so it's, I agree wholeheartedly. And I come back from those trips just so full. And then, I mean, I don't know too many people here in Sedona yet, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I, I just, wherever I go, I always travel alone. But yeah, like you said, those those elements of just community bringing me in, so welcoming. Gosh, yeah, I do agree. We need more of that. Yeah, and you said you went to uh, to Machu Picchu, right? How was that sacred valley, man? 
Oh, it, yeah, it was, I spent a lot of time in the Andes Mountains, you know, hours, just a lot of work with, you know, with my higher power. And I had a shaman with me too. And um, walking me through the process for weeks, you know, and just really um, trying to absorb as much of the knowledge, the sacred knowledge that I could. Um, uh, Oijan Tambo, Uros, uh, obviously Lima, Cusco, Pisac, uh, Agua Caliente, Machu Picchu Pueblo, all, I mean, it just, the you know, because you're in an, in an indigenous community and it's just such a beautiful experience to um, share meals with them and what, you know, observe how they live. And I came back just, I, I mean, I, I was thinking about going right back in, de this, in December. I just, I miss it so much. I could live there for sure. Yeah, the people are amazing, food, and the overall energy is beyond palpable. You take it with you forever, hopefully. Yeah, that's uh, the Sacred Valley is where I actually proposed to Ashley. Um, super happy. Yeah, really happy I made that choice because uh, we we ended up, have you ever seen the Sky Lodge? Those, uh, those capsules up on the side of the mountain that you have to like hike, like climb up to, to stay in them. Oh man. I keep hearing about those. How did I miss that? There's actually, uh, like the only brewery pretty much in the area, which is really random, but they have it right there. Um, it's like right at the base of where these pods are. And so anyways, that's the, yeah, that's where I proposed, man. And it's, uh, I'm happy I did. Cause it's truly like one of the places where when you're there, it's, uh, it's a tangible feeling. Like you can actually feel a sensation of very, just like calmness is what it felt like to me. Like the entire time you're there, it just feels super calm, like a very calm energy throughout that entire Valley. Wow. How'd I miss that? Yeah. Can you send me any information on that? Like where yeah. those little pods, that specific area, I keep hearing about it now, but I, I, I can relate, man. Um, when I was up there at Machu, Machu Picchu, kind of like snuck underneath these little ropes and just laid in the grass, man, for had to be a couple hours, just right on the side of the mountain. It is such a thick, beautiful, powerful energy. And the people there too, you know, it's, it's all, it's all the frequency. So like you're seeing, you're feeling, absorbing the, you know, the, you know, the excitement, the energy of other people that, you know, are experiencing it as well. It's powerful. I, uh, yeah, everybody should go to, you know, explore, dip, you know, the, the energetic sites all, and they're all around the world. They're here, absolutely here in Sedona. Luckily, I'm so grateful that I just wake up to Thunder Mountain right there. But um, yeah, it's, it's like my new thing. I love to explore Rowan sacred sites, just the powerful ceremonial energy that has been, uh, you know, so many powerful moments happen yeah have you have you been to bali yet i haven't dang it i have not but i mean that i'm absolutely going it's just kind of a uh although i'm down to you know spend a, a you know a while traveling so but that that's a, a big trip so gotta gotta plan for it i'm not a big planner <laughs> i just go i would say the two two places where i felt like I mean, there, there's been a few places that it, like I, you can feel a, a nice spiritual sensation, but uh, Bali as a whole, man, it's uh, the culture and the people are some of just as a whole, they're like some of the sweetest people I think I've ever met and uh, very kind, loving, um, live by what they what they preach. You know, uh, they're huge into karma. So like that's that plays like a literal role in their lives. And you can just you can feel it, you know, like they're they're. They're not out there trying to like ish will, uh, wish ill upon you or, you know, harm you in any way. Like, cause that's why, why would you, why would you do that? You know what I mean? It's going to come back to you. And, and so you can just feel it, man. The people are, are amazing, beautiful people. Wow. That's a powerful statement right there. That's beautiful. Yeah. I have to experience that. And I will. Wow. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard a lot of that. And I have a very good friend that, yeah, literally just moved there from the States and he's been there for a while um, and loves it. And he's raising his family there. And um, so, yeah, I, I have to go check it out. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth the visit. I mean, Sedona is beautiful as well. And you have some crazy, 
beautiful sights. I mean, even just driving into Sedona is like one of the wildest experiences to see some of those rock formations pop out of nowhere. Yes. Yes. I know exactly what you mean. Right off the 179, coming in, seeing uh, Cathedral Rock, Bell Rock, Courthouse Manor. Yeah. Especially when you get, it's getting colder now. So when the snow comes in and like kind of like snow caps the Red Mountains, it is insanely beautiful here. Yeah. And then you have obviously, I mean, for anyone who's watching this on YouTube, like you can see the room. Wait, hold on. Is it, sorry, is this your house? Okay, sorry, because your your the store that you have set up is beautiful with all the paintings you have going on. So I was trying to figure out. I was like, okay, is this, is this the same place or not? But uh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm home now. And uh, but thank you. yeah, you, you saw it. You got a chance to come in and see the headquarters. Um, put a lot of put so much work and time and beautiful energy into that. Really happy how it turned out. It's a good place to just lock in and obviously being here in Sedona, having our team uh, come to that hub of energy every day. We put a lot into that. So still building it out, still getting, you know, our uh, making our presence here in Sedona. But um, yeah, it's nice to be able to ship, get products out every day. And uh, when we were working with the fulfillment center, it was just really hard for me, man, because there was so much breakage and delays on shipments and so many errors with uh with that and that process was so fun for me in the beginning and you know shipping orders as they would come in and putting our little touch on it and little just gifts to rate you know vip whatever we want to do we had that control and so being able to do that now man evan i can't even tell it's just a big weight off my shoulders uh and yeah our customers are loving it so it's nice to have our own spot. We wanted to get a, like a nice compound headquarters, but I didn't really know where home was, you know, until I found Sedona. And the uh, the hard work shows. Like when you get there, it's a it's a gorgeous spot. So you you definitely you did well with it. Um, and like I I have to ask as well, Andy. Like, have you always been into uh, like skincare, skin health? Like, has that always been a passion of yours, or is that something that developed later? Uh, no. But I was fascinated with just solving a problem like that makes it creates an emotion in how we feel like I get, so I, I became interested in that and then passionate on looking and feeling good with different products as I got into the entertainment industry. But I would say, yeah, just having that little cystic acne problem, 18 years old, growing into your body, eating terrible foods from dorm, you know, kitchens and high sugar, just trying to put on weight creatine you know my body you know was just kind of like it was a lot for my body to absorb obviously hormones are racing as well so um i that was the first time where i really took a, a different look into skincare but i didn't do it intentionally i was kind of just led on this path i remember going into uh chinese herbalist uh his office right off shattuck avenue and Ber in berkeley just started picking his brain on health issues i, I think i was trying to get a hair supplement. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, I found out about aquia, silica horsetail aqueous extract from Flora, F-L-O-R-A. I think they're still around. That was my first supplement I ever bought. It was like, it was, yeah, just for a horsetail extract for hair. And then, but I, why at 18 years old? But, but this, um, this, this herbalist was just explaining the importance of cleansing our blood and building our blood from a head to toe level and just, that's it just got the wheels spinning on ingredients and just how important it is to take care of ourselves with clean ingredients. And so I went out and switched up uh, clear cell to like dove soap just purely for like the laundry. I, I just it, they didn't make it didn't make sense to me. At the time. Keep in mind, I was 18. It's not like I was going through and analyzing what the ingredients were. But I saw, you know, dove soap, five ingredients. Two of them were coconut derived uh one of them was like a coconut derived surfactant and so but i saw that and it was just five ingredients so i started just using dove soap and it you know experiencing benefits right there and so 18 19 years old i thought you know i found out that i solved an issue that really affected me you know and so that was good i didn't have that cystic acne anyone any anymore and so i started doing things i think i went from that to buying like a dove eye, eye cream and like different just taking care of my skin you know, I guess I really liked 
looking and feeling good. I think it's important, you know, for confidence levels, just to have some type of routine that works for you. And I guess I started doing that just to kind of collect myself in the mornings and making sure we look sharp before we leave the door to create a better, you know, energy personally and professionally, wherever we go. Hey, I mean, it just comes down to how we feel. Like if we feel good leaving the house, we're going to treat people better. You know, if you have some little thing that's annoying you, bugging you, and you leave the house with that, you're going to carry that in every conversation that you have. People, you know, we're smart. We can read energies very well. And so I want to make mine optimal as much as I can. I didn't know all of that back then, but that's really played a big part in my life and performance and just overall energy doing tasks, anything that, I, you know, we go about in our day, go about it with, you know, why not go about it 100%. It's super true what you're saying about looking good. Like, I know it sounds kind of superficial sometimes when you hear people saying it, but at the end of the day, it's so true. Like, uh, whenever, you know, working with people who are trying to get healthier and obviously one of the major side effects is you get better looking when you get healthier, right? Like you, you lose the weight, you know, and, and you feel better, you look better. And that plays such a massive role in how you show up in the world. Like when you feel good about yourself, when you step outside, that's such a game changer in so many different ways. And, and truthfully, like when you feel better about yourself, like you're going to, you're just going to exude that and treat people better as well. Um, and, and using clean ingredients is, uh, is a great way to make sure, uh, for example, like you're not having some of those side effects that can come from a lot of these other products that aren't as clean, you know, like maybe they work short term, but you know, I've seen with a few other uh, skin products, like they can start to dry the skin out, you know, or they can just be super harsh. So like right in the beginning, yeah, maybe they do help your acne or whatever it might be. Uh, but then down the road, you know, it's like this really harsh chemical that you're constantly applying to your skin. And, and I think with, uh, with going a more natural route, it might take a little more time you know, and, and it usually does, but at the end of the day, it's a lasting thing, you know, and this is, and it's like zero side effects, you know, which to me is always like, why not at least try that first? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you can just get such, you can get exactly what you want from ingredients from nature. Um, I think I strongly believe they're just as effective. Sure. There's some pretty profound, uh, intense technology coming out you know, with laser, uh, different oxygen, uh, plasma devices, you name it. But um, I, I just really believe in the whole keeping it simple with just cleanse, exfoliate, hydrate, repair. You stay consistent with that routine with exfoliating a few times a week, taking a day or two off in between, letting your skin recover, feeding it with good ingredients while it's healing and recovering. And then just staying on top of your diet as well, getting good sunlight, Hydration is important. And then the different elements like red light, sauna, hyperbaric oxygen, ozone, you know, implementing all of those additional, uh, you know, sources of technology to optimize our health as well. I mean, it's only going to help us all encompassing um, feeling good, you know. Yeah, and you hit on you hit on two topics that I've I've wanted to ask you about. So for one is is definitely with diet because obviously what you're putting in is going to show up externally as well, right? A lot of the times like rashes and things like that can be uh, a sign of you eating something that's not in accordance with your body. And so um, just kind of wondering, like, do you have a, do you have a specific diet that either you follow or that you think is best for skin health? Like is there, or even certain foods that you recommend people consume or, or maybe avoid in terms of strict uh, skin health? When I was first getting into like my recovery, that's when my, my diet and nutrition supplementation was optimal. It's, it's still, still very good. Uh, but it's not at the obsessive level that it was, but I mean, back then it was just, it just made sense to me to feed my system with as many nutrient dense foods, uh, as I could. Um, and then eating organic grass fed beef, organic grass fed lamb, eggs, nutrient dense foods, cruciferous vegetables, sweet potatoes, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, just, just with high vitamin content. That's what I mean by like a superfood, uh, spirulina. Um, and then finding out a little bit more about supplements. Um, it can get really up to like methylene blue and nicotine and all that, or you can keep it simpler with, 
you know, things like creatine and an amino acid profile for your workouts and things like that. But I also like to get now I'm more on like, um, food based nutrition with things like, uh, still Brussels sprouts, uh, fermented vegetables, elk only specifically is my meat, meat, beef as well when uh, necessary, but elk is something I really like sockeye salmon, you know, powerful a- animals. Um, you know, everything that we eat and consume becomes a part of us. So we want to make sure strategically, if you can, to make it badass. And um, uh, so that's what I do for protein, usually um, eggs, elk, and grass fed beef, sockeye salmon, uh, good fats, avocados, coconut, some nuts every now and then, cashews and almonds, um, coconut yogurt, uh, goat milk yogurt, goat milk kefir. Um, just getting good probiotic bacteria to help with your gut health. Um, and then I, I, I do fast 16 hours. So like, say if I, I haven't eaten yet today, I'll probably eat, I don't know, I may eat after this. So it's 12, 17 now. So maybe like one, but I ate last night at eight. So four, 12, we're looking at a 15 out now, 17 hour fast. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what I, what I like to do. Just, just consuming as many nutrient dense foods as I can while staying hydrated with good water, changing the oil, so to speak with niacin and sweating out any type of impurities, impurities or toxins almost daily. And so it just becomes something that we got to, you know, as we get older and, and start to age, like we just got to be more aware of and kick up our, uh, personal care. Yeah. And uh, I know you mentioned sunlight exposure, which I'm definitely a fan of sunlight exposure, uh, specifically like morning sunlight exposure and uh, evening sunlight exposure. Like those are the times where I really try to to get out and get, you know, sun on the skin. Um, midday, I usually, uh, you know, don't don't usually go too much out in the in the sun. And also like during the winter when I'm like, losing my tan. It takes me a while to get that back before I can you know, have that up. And so, uh, yeah, without getting sunburned. So usually I, I stick to like the earlier uh, time of the day is usually when I get most of the sunlight, but there's this, uh, obviously this huge movement on sunscreen. So what's kind of your take with sunscreen? Like where do you think it has a place in terms of, you know, protecting the skin and, and do you think it's like truly evil or, or not as evil? Like what, what where's kind of your stance on that? I mean, I really do personally believe that uh, the, the sunscreens, I mean, I don't want to say the names, but, uh, that there are just most of the sunscreens on store shelves are, are toxic. And I feel like then baking in the sun, baking those toxins. I mean, you look at an ingredient deck sunscreen, non-nano zinc, titanium dioxide's okay, but I'd rather go non-nano zinc. So like a zinc based sunscreen with good organic, ideally components and ingredients in that formula. You don't really have, you don't have to add in all of those, uh, carcinogenic ingredients. I mean, so I, I do believe it's important for people with, that are very, uh, that have issues with the sun, but, um, the one, nobody's really nailed it. I think there are a couple of good sunscreens out there. I don't personally use it. I feel you know, this is just my theory that my, my skin has gotten used to the sun. And I do believe in the benefits of sunlight direct on the skin, at least 20 minutes a day, right around 20 minutes is like the sweet spot, I guess. But like, yeah, like you said, in the morning or evening, right when you get those good red, uh, red rays, but, um, I would, yeah, it's, uh, what well, we're going to make one next year, but, um, it's going to be, obviously as clean as I can make it and as effective as I can make it maybe with a little tint too. It's kind of like give it a little tinted moisturizer with the SPF, um, that could help. So I, yeah, like I said, nobody's really nailed it yet. And so we want to, I under, it's a very, we get, it's our most commonly asked question when we're going to make one. I just don't use one and I, but it, uh, we should bring one to market and we're going to soon. That's a promise. It's just, I got kind of locked in on sidetracked on some other products, but we're going to be making one. It, you know, there are a lot of <laughs> so many um, conflicting opinions on sunscreen. That's mine. 
I just believe in really, you know, taking care of yourself uh, with diet and, uh, you know, diet can play a, a big part in how, you know, it can have some, I think astaxanthin has some quote unquote sun protectant properties as well. Astaxanthin is located in uh, salmon. I mean, it, it's just, it, yeah. So I think diet can play a part eating really good nutrient dense foods, fruits, vegetables, and a good um, amount of protein and good fats as well. And just uh, with good antioxidant capacity to help, you know, counteract free radicals and any sun damage as well. That 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 could, you know, play a good part in just lessening the, I guess, the effects of the sun that are damaging to the skin and the overall. But I, I, I do feel like there are some benefits to it as well. It's a tough, tough subject, but we're going to be coming yeah. out of the product. Well, first off, I'm excited to see what you come out with. That's going to definitely be uh, something I would I would pick up for myself because I, I don't usually use sunscreen, um, but I do have occasions where like if I know I'm going to be at the beach all day long. Um, sure, I'll try to cover up midday with, you know, wearing clothes and whatnot. But uh, if I if I am out in this time, it's like especially if I haven't built up my base tan, then I absolutely will go ahead and try to throw on like the cleanest sunscreen that I could possibly find. So a sunscreen usually lasts me a very long uh, period of time because I'll usually get my sun exposure earlier on in the day. And then, yeah, just come later in the day, I'll, I'll try to cover up with clothing, you know, wear a hat and, and uh, just get some clothes, uh, some coverage on there. Just um, yeah, because that midday sun can definitely take its toll on me, <laughs> especially. Uh, so that's usually kind of how I go about it. I try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, it's kind of, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really, not really sure where to stand on it as well, but I definitely think there's some of them out there that are not, not helping us. You know what I mean? And, and I've heard as well, like people saying that it uh, like stops vitamin D uh, production because you're putting on that base layer and it's not allowing for the cholesterol to grab the sunlight and, you know, create vitamin D. So like, you know, I, I don't have any studies to back that up, but these, these are just kind of like hearsay and, and, uh, kind of kind of makes sense just off of a, a stand you know like a basic standpoint but um yeah so but super excited for that and then you, you mentioned as well uh some animal products so uh i know you have well you have insect products you have like uh, uh bee products in, in a lot of your things uh but are you looking to also incorporate like beef tallow or any of those as well in the future in, in any of your uh, new innovations? Yeah. I mean, I was very interested in emu oil, beef tallow. I mean, this is 2012. Um, so it, it's a possibility for sure. Um, I, it'd be interesting to see how my uh, customers would, if they'd be open to that, <laughs> excuse me, but I'm almost positive that they would be. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's a tough kind of dicey subject, but I, I mean, if it's effective, we're going to use it. Um, so I think emu oil tallow could play a part. They're becoming popular now, so I don't really like to do what other people are doing, but yeah, we, I could see that for sure. I'm always, the wheels are always spinning. Yeah, no. And, and also, um, I mean, if you're open to sharing, I would love to hear some of the, the products we could look forward to from Ali Tora. Cause I know, uh, I think meteorite scrub, uh, the meteorite scrub and like angel mist, those were some of the newer ones that you released, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I have a, uh, a leather travel pouch coming out next week that I literally just walked into a showroom in Florence, Italy that I found online. There's a big language barrier. I, I wanted, I had this outside idea of finding a leather manufacturer just in that 24 hours that I was in Florence and I did. And so I, I went in, luckily I had my design file cause there was, you know, we were communicating through Google translate, <laughs> just face to face. I didn't have a meeting set up or anything. Luckily he owned the company. Uh, he, he just comes in, like puts his glasses on, wonders what, what, uh, what I'm doing there. But, uh, I quickly tried to explain, showed him the design file for this bag that I was making that I couldn't find a good designer or manufacturer for, but I had like the bare bones base of it. Right. And so we went in and, Oh, that was April of this year. Wait till you see this bag. Like I, you know, I've been fascinated with, you know, Tom Ford, uh, fear of God, Gucci Prada to me, things like that, just with, for their style, their detail. And, um, 
to, to be able to duplicate that and, and make something that I truly believe is equally, if not better than all that. All, I mean, from the inner print, from like a vision that I had in Peru and ayahuasca with jaguars, hummingbirds, angel wings, um, peacocks, and just the color flow, the gradient flow inside of the pouch, all full grain leather, the details, the Chevron pyramid coming up, Alitura, like the pulleys, just getting to geek out and create your absolute dream fashion product. It's my first stab at fashion, but man, did that wake up a beast inside of me because now it's like when you find somebody that can duplicate your vision, it, that's the, it's the most important part, you know, getting a good manufacturer and getting a good, you know, I have a, a contractor that I'm working with because obviously the, the language barrier, we got a, kind of a middleman that's working out of Milan right now. He's from Jordan. He's awesome. So he and I really hit it off. Who knows? We can do, you know, maybe a little travel pouch, maybe get into leather uh, apparels wear like a jacket as well, like a jacket or boots. I just, I, I'm, I love to create. And so this is my first stab at the pouch. Wait till you see it, man. I, I, I haven't seen anything better than that, uh, including, including, you know, looking into the Louis Vuitton. We took different aspects. Obviously, success leaves clues, but, oh, it, it just, it's sick. I cannot wait. Anyway, so that's coming out next week. But there's a huge story behind it. We put a bow on that. That's going to be in the store in under eight months. That's crazy, you know? Um it doesn't normally happen like that. Seven years on my meteorite scrub, right? So these things take time. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm obsessed for sure. And I, you know, if you can make something perfect, I'm definitely going to do my best to do that, you know, to my, to my vision. And so, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, it's a very, uh, you know, creating is just what I, you know, one of the biggest things I love to do because you, know, you get to build on a daily and then blow yourself away daily with certain things or, you know, it's not that good. You know, it's just the, the roller coaster of that. It can be, yeah, really exciting. And I, I kind of see the, yeah, the influence of what you were saying with the whole vision with like the hummingbirds, the jaguars. I like, uh, there's a little aspect of that in your store as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you saw that. It, it's a very personal, special quality product that I'm proud of, um, you know, so I'm just, It'll be interesting to see the customer response to that. And then um, let's see. So next year I'm going to be working on finishing up my uh, shampoo, leave-in conditioner and conditioner. Um, hopefully putting a bow on our deodorant. That's already finished. I just need to find a good packaging for it. Um, a sunscreen and an eye specific gel to, uh, to help with fine lines and wrinkles around the eye area. So yeah, we're going to be busy next year for sure. I'm excited for that. I'm really excited for the deodorant, actually. Um, deodorant has been one of the things that, for myself, uh, I feel like I haven't really found a super good, clean deodorant yet. I'm absolutely going to give that a try. Um, what is it that, like, what is it that you've done with your deodorant to uh, like in terms of like the scent and what, what is it that is in normal deodorant? That's so bad. That's not going to be in yours. Um, I mean, we're, it's going to be like with the base of like charcoal, baking soda. Uh, we just removed all the harsh fragrances, which is usually, especially in that absorbable area underneath, you know, the, the underarms and armpit area. Uh, you know, those blood vessels are so, uh, uh, you know, they absorb, you know, that's a very, um, geez, what am I trying to say? Like uh, porous kind yeah, of. porous area. So, I mean, the absorption of those toxins that you're rubbing underneath it are going to be, you know, directly, um, you know, entering your system. So in your bloodstream. So you want to make sure that area is, you know, not, you're not introducing any tar uh, toxic ingredients into that um but yeah i mean the the deodorant is something that is still you know we're using german chamomile we're also using the santal black formula so we're going to be at two different variations scent wise but um like all of our products it's going to be toxin free and um uh yeah like you said that i mean that's why i stopped using deodorant is because of uh just the laundry list of government recognized carcinogens in them so we, um, 
obviously with every one of our products, we don't have anything like that. That's where we stand out. So we, um, yeah, looking forward to releasing those and, yeah, but really excited to get after hair care and uh, just removing all the toxic ingredients and foaming agents and things that don't serve our hair or skin. So that's the project that I'm really excited about. Yeah, super cool. I'm a, I know one of the reasons I stopped using like the harsh deodorants was uh, I was told that your armpits are a large place for detoxification, obviously, like a lot of sweat and, you know, removal of toxins and stuff can occur in that area. Um, and putting the improper things in there could block it up or uh, be adding to the toxic load. So that was definitely one of the reasons I moved away from that. And uh, yeah, it's the same thing with the with the hair products as well. Like you were saying, um, a good styling gel as well. If you haven't already put some thought into that would be a, a awesome place to go as well. I would really appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I was also going to ask, so what, uh, where, where would you start someone off with the skincare products? Like if they, if they had never heard about Ali Tura, cause I know there's going to be a few people listening to this that definitely haven't heard of Ali Tura before. Um, where would you start them off with products here? With our four step facial, I think that right there is an all encompassing way to cleanse, exfoliate, hydrate, and repair, basically cleansing with the pearl cleanser exfoliating with the meteorite scrub or the per, or the clay mask and then following with the moisturizer post cleanse and exfoliation well i like the gold serum some people like the moisturizer as well um i like the gold serum because it's it's like a concentrated moisturizer with active ingredients so if you follow up your exfoliating with a really healing concentrated moisturizer like the gold serum you're going to help condition that area and develop a thicker collagen layer with ingredients like copper peptide uh, plant derived vitamin A that we have in there, marine collagen, CoQ10, and astaxanthin. It's a collection of active ingredients that really help heal the skin and uh, moisturize and uh, post exfoliation. So then you want to seal in the results at night with the night cream. Uh, it's a really rich formula. We have K Factor 16, Manuka honey, two different plant derived stem cells, and vegan hyaluronic acid to really heal and condition. Uh, during the most important time to do so before you go to bed, right? So when you're in one position for hours, you want to know that this thicker consistency, which we have with our night cream, is in that area and doing its job. Um, so you wake up refreshed, feeling better, uh, looking better than you did the night before. It's it's an absolute, it's a, it's a really powerful, uh, you know, just when you use it and when you don't, you, it's a big, big difference for sure. Yeah, the night cream might actually be my favorite product from you guys. I like the way it smells and... And also just the, like you were saying, the thick consistency on it. It's something that's super nice and almost like when you wake up in the morning, it's still kind of there. You can kind of give a little rub in to, to move it in a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's it's one of my favorites for sure. That's exactly what I do. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, Andy, uh, coming towards the hour portion of this episode, which is usually where I try to uh, keep these episodes so that they're digestible for listeners. Um because I'm sure I could talk to you for a few more hours easily. <laughs> but um, yeah, Andy, I just wanted to kind of give you this platform right now and and share kind of, you know, what's going on with Alitura as well. I know it's uh, during the holidays. So if you've got any big sales coming up or uh, anything you want to mention to the listeners and and share where they can find you, connect with you, all of that good stuff, uh, please take the floor. Yeah, no. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um yeah, just uh, we're really excited. We just launched our new store here in Sedona, Arizona, um, actively working to uh, get our new releases into the store, working on a sunscreen, hair care, and um, our new leather travel pouch made straight from Italy will be in the store by the end of the end of next week. And um, just, uh, you know, our award winning products are really uh, making an impact. We have like a collection of four point nine cumulative ratings of close to 5,000 reviews online. We just won uh, Echo S Excellence. Uh, they've been doing it for years too. The best uh, skincare for him and for her in uh, 2023. So we're just going to continue to do our best to, you know, be on podcasts like this. Obviously our best form of marketing is through our customers and getting out and just reaching as many people as we can get, so we can put more into our products and not, put into these huge marketing campaigns you know it's just more 
um, into the formulations, more focus onto the actual products that our customers are using and then just using their authentic testimonials and uh, content and their reviews and responses is our marketing. Just it's, uh, it's been a nice way to, to continuously grow in our 10th year now of business. I mean, just speaking from personal experience, it's uh, absolutely my favorite skincare brand. Like there is, I'll, I'll, I have to, sorry, I have to be honest with you here. Um, Ashley uses you as well. She does enjoy uh, Osea as well. She uses some of their things as well, but um, I definitely, I, I have all decked out with Ali Tora. That's, that's my go-to right there. And I just, yeah, I love the, I love the clean portions of the, uh, of the ingredients. You know, it's, it's super clean. You can literally look up everything and see where it's coming from. Uh, you know, it's, it's very plant-based and, and clean ingredients. And, and I just feel comfortable using it on my skin. You know, I feel, uh, that it's gonna not only not do more harm to me, but it's actually going to provide some good, you know, and, and, uh, feel super good. And, and it, Feel good to look good as well. So <laughs> thank you very much, Andy. I appreciate that. And uh, also Andy wanted to just say uh, thank you for being such a genuine person and like super, yeah, just uh, letting go of that ego. You know what I mean? I think that's a, a really big thing I see with you is you're just very like humble. And I really appreciate that, Andy. I see it all the time with you and and uh, keep doing it. Keep pushing the needle and uh, yeah, lean in, lean into the discomfort, lean into this innovation and and these avenues that it's taking on because it's uh, it's going to lead to big things for sure. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that, man. Same to you. You know, you're you're a great dude. Uh, you got a friend from afar and me, and definitely let me know next time you come out. You can even crash here if you want. And um, also, I wanted to offer uh, your following uh, coupon code for the store. So it's uh, is it elemental 15 yep elemental 15 elemental 15 okay i want to make sure that we got that in but yeah no i appreciate it man i appreciate your words um yeah it's a this this side is uh you know just it's new to me and completely different than any of the bigger cities you know la san francisco bay area chicago um that i've lived in but um i prefer it and i'm right where i'm supposed to be so Appreciate you, brother.